Hi, I'm Danielle, and I will be discussing the assessment of the abdominal and gastrointestinal system. First things first, I would do perform hand hygiene, provide privacy for the patient, introduce myself, and discuss with the patient like what I will be doing. I want to observe for the patient's general behavior. Is the patient grimacing or moaning or maybe guarding um, his or her stomach? Um, is I want to look, look at the position of the patient. Um, when in inspecting the abdomen, I would want to lay the patient in the supine position and I want to look at the skin color. Where is the patient uh, skin even? Uh, make sure there, there aren't any discolorations of the skin, the skin characteristics. Uh, is, uh, are there any visual, visual, visible, sorry, visible lesions or scars? Um, contour of the skin, is it flat? Is it rounded, scyphoid? Is it um, uh, protuberant? Uh, I want to look at the, the, the skin, the movement. Um, is a patient using, using the accessory muscles? After inspecting the skin, I want to auscultate the skin, uh, the, the abdomen. And I would use the diaphragm of the stethoscope first. When auscultating, I want to, we're going clockwise. We're going um, from the lower right quadrant to the upper right quadrant, then the upper left quadrant to the lower left quadrant. And normal bowel sounds are clicking and gargling. And it's usually five to, I want to say 30 per minute, five to 30 per minute. And if I hear absent bell sounds, I want to listen for um, five minutes. So after listening in each quadrant uh, with the diaphragm of a stethoscope, I will want to listen to the uh, arterial, listen uh, for arterial bruits. I listen, I will listen for arterial bruits and the aortic, the iliac, the renal left and right, and the femoral arteries. After listening, after listening to the arterial, listening for arterial bruits, I would want to listen to the venous hum. Now, the venous hum is a um, is a diagnostic uh, for venous portal hypertension, and that's why we listen for that venous hum. After the after auscultating, I would palpate. There, there are two types of palpations. There's a soft palpation and, and there's a hard palpation. The soft palpation, it, I'm palpating about one to two centimeters and I'm palpating again clockwise and in all four quadrants. After palpating, and I'm asking the patient if they feel any tenderness. I'm palpating for like muscle tone. Is it uh, uh, firm or uh, is it non-tender? Um, and after I palpate softly, again, about one to two, two, two uh, centimeters, I'll palpate, do a harder palpation, which was roughly four to five, four to six centimeters deep. And again, I'm palpating in all four quadrants and I'm asking the patient if I'm palpating for masses and I'm asking the patient if they're feeling, feeling tenderness and I'm also palpating or the palpating the uh, aortic pulses, uh, the aortic pulsation for aortic pulsation. After I palpate, do perform the heart palpation, 
I want to palpate around the umbilicus, usually one to two centimeters away, away from the, the umbilicus. But again, I'm palpating for like bulges, bulging and nodules. Um, I'm palpating the umbilical ring. Uh, and after I perform that abdominal assessment, I want to perform a CVA for tenderness. Now, uh, CVA tenderness is usually found in patients who have like a, a kidney infection. Um, usually, when we're performing or you know a CVA, we're you're you're percussing the kidneys. <sighs> um, there's usually tenderness around the kidneys, so that that, that patient is going to feel pain and.